Good evening. Tonight you're going to be learning about topic 4-6, which is dividing with zeros in the quotient. Quotient is the answer to a division problem. You need to memorize what that means. You may see several questions where it says, find the quotient to this answer, to this problem. Quotient means to divide, and the quotient is the answer to a division problem. Your learning goal for this topic is to divide a three-digit number by a one-digit number when there is a zero in the quotient. And when we get to the vocabulary words, we're going to talk about what dividend and divisor mean to help you. So here's learning goals. So at the top of your math journal, you would write learning goals and underline it. The first learning goal is that you need to know the steps of the division process, which down below is divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. I'm sure you all have some type of saying to help you. I always do dad, mom, sister, brother. Some of you may have does McDonald's sell Big Macs, I think is another one. So whatever clever saying you have to help you memorize those, that's perfectly fine. You also need to know your multiplication facts. Use estimation to make division easier. And use zeros in the quotient when needed. So make sure you push pause and write down these four learning goals. And at any time, you can check your division using multiplication. The next section is vocabulary. So please write vocabulary in your math journal. And your first vocabulary word is dividend. Dividend is the number that is being divided. So, for example, oh, it's kind of dark, but you have 326. This is the number that is being divided, and that is called your dividend. The divisor is the number by which the dividend is being divided. The number I'm going to write on the outside here would be considered the divisor. So this is the divisor, and that is the dividend. And then the quotient is the answer to a division problem. So go ahead and push pause and write down the following vocabulary words. And then our next step will be to do a brief explanation or example, and then we'll move on. So here is our example. 708, which is, if you remember from our vocabulary section, that is our dividend, divided by 3, which is our divisor. So 708 divided by 3. And our first step is to divide. So you're asking yourself, how many times does 3 go into 7? Well, our multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9. 9 would be too much. So 3 goes into 7 2 times. 2 times 3 is 6. Subtract and we get a 1. After we subtract, our next step is to bring down. So we're going to bring down our 0. 3 goes into 10. Well, 3, 6, 9, 12. 12 would be too much. So 3, 6, 9. So 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. We're going to subtract. That's going to give us 1. We need to bring down our 8. Oh, I'm running out of room. 3 goes into 18, well, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So 3 goes into 18 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18. Sorry, guys, I ran out of room. And that means we do not have a remainder. So our quotient, which is the answer to a division problem, is 236. Now we're going to do our practice problems. So you need to write practice in your math journal. And the first practice problem for tonight is 504, which is our dividend, divided by 6, which is our divisor. So go ahead and write the problem down. Push pause. And when you're ready to see the answer, go ahead and push play. So 504, there's our dividend divided by 6, which is our divisor, and we're going to go through our steps. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Now, 
our learning goal is zeros in the quotient. So for example, does six go into five? Well, since five is smaller than six, when we say our multiples of six, we start with six. So we're going to put a zero above the five. So now we're looking at six into 50. And keeping your place value lined up is really important. So six goes into 50 how many times? Well, I know that six times five is 30. Six times six is 36. Six times seven is 42. Six times eight is 48. Six times nine is 54. So six times nine would be too much. So six times eight is 48. I'm going to subtract that and get a difference of 2. Then I'm going to bring down my 4. So 6, after you bring down, you start all over again. 6 goes into 24 how many times? Well, 6 times 4 is 24. And I do not have a remainder, so my quotient is 84. And we have the right answer. I always love getting the right answer, so that's great. Now we're ready for practice problem number two. 804, which is our dividend, divided by three, which is our divisor. So go ahead and write that down, push pause, and work the problem out. When you're ready to go through the problem with me, push play. So we have 804, which is our dividend, the number that we're trying to break into groups, divided by our divisor, which is 3. So 3 goes into 8 how many times? Well, 3, 6, 9. 9 would be too much, so it's going to go into it 2 times. And 2 times 3 is 6. 8 minus 6 is 2. Bring down my 0. And then we're going to divide again. 3 goes into 20 how many times? Well, 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 7 would be 21, which would be too much. So 3 goes into 20 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18, which is a difference of 2. Bring down my 4. And 3 goes into 24 how many times? Well, we just said 3 times 7 was 21, so 3 times 8 would be 24. Subtract, and there's nothing else to bring down. So our quotient would be 268, and we have the correct answer. Now we're going to move on to practice problem number 3, which is a word problem. You don't need to write the word problem down. What I want you to do after I read it is to push pause and then solve the problem. Please make sure you label. We've been working really hard in my classroom on labeling, so make sure you label your answer. Carrie has 981 Skittles. So that's gonna be important. In a large Ziploc bag. 981 to me, what I'm thinking already, appears that that's going to be my dividend. So 981 Skittles in a large Ziploc bag. If she wants to share them with herself and eight friends, you guys, herself and eight friends. So eight friends plus herself would be nine as our divisor. How many will each person get? I know if I had a bag of Skittles, I would want some myself too. So I don't blame her for including herself. So you're going to write your answer in your journal and show all your work. So we have 981 divided by 9. So go ahead and push pause, and when you're ready to come back to go through the problem, push play. Okay, guys, so we have 9 goes into 9 one time. 1 times 9 is 9. Bring down our 8. Now, after you bring down, you have to divide again. Here's our 0 in our quotient. How many times does 9 go into 8? Zero times. You have to mark that, you guys. Then zero times nine is zero. Eight minus zero is eight. Bring down our one. Nine goes into 81. Nine times. 
9 times 9 is 81. And we have 0 left over. So the answer, our quotient, would be 109. And we need to label Skittles. One hundred nine Skittles, and it didn't give us the answer, but I know we're right. And then now you're going to label in your math journal challenge. So go ahead and write challenge. I'll read the question to you, and then go ahead and work it out. Show all your work. Explain how you got the answer using those key vocabulary words, and bring it in tomorrow so we can check it. Make sure you label. It says, Oliver's Stuffed Bear Shop has 367 Valentine's Bears in stock. He must ship, those Brenda, ship these to Brenda's Bear Boutique. We have some alliteration there, don't we? If nine bears can fit into a shipping box, how many boxes will it take to ship all the bears to Brenda's house? So your labeling question is going to come from here, how you're going to label it. So we have 367 Valentine's Day bears in stock. Oliver must ship them to Brenda's Bear Boutique. If nine bears can fit into a shipping box, how many boxes will it take to ship all the bears to Brenda's? So you're going to write your answer in your journal and you're going to show all of your work. And please make sure you label. And I always tell my kids it's always a great idea to explain your thinking. It's a step to go over and beyond what is expected. You can check your answer when you come back to school tomorrow. Now, let's finish up. Review your learning goals. Reviewing your learning goals are when you divide, you need to know the steps. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. You need to know your multiplication facts, guys. It's extremely important. You can use estimation to help you. And also, you can always multiply to check to see if your answer is right. Make sure you have your learning goals written in your journal. Make sure you have your vocabulary words written in your journal. Make sure you've completed your practice problems in your journal. And also your challenge problem in your journal. You have now completed topic 4-6. Have a great night, and I will see some of you in the morning.